you know, and I was making over a million dollars a year profit. And my business allowed me to travel in style and experience life, I believe, the way God meant for us to experience this wonderful creation that we are a part of. You're listening to John Cristani. After being fired from his job, John built a solopreneur business earning more than a million dollars in annual profit within a few short years. We riff on a wide range of topics in this fun interview today, and I have a huge announcement related to John you'll definitely want to hear after the interview, so stick around. Oh yeah, and you will definitely learn how John earned well beyond seven figures and how you could too, because John is today's guest on Solopreneur Success. Welcome to the Solopreneur Success Podcast, where successful business owners gather to share true stories and sound advice to help you start and grow your own solopreneur business. Come soar with us and design the life you love. Now, here's your host, Steve Combs. Hello, solopreneurs. Today, I'm interviewing John Castani, a guy who has reached levels of financial success as a solopreneur that most won't even dare to dream of. And in fact, John created not a six-figure, but a seven-figure business with no employees in just two years while traveling the world. And that's well before the age of 30. And now is on track to hit an eight-figure business this year, still as a solopreneur. And today, we're going to talk about how John did it and how you can too. And I'm excited for this conversation. John, welcome to the show today. Excited to be here. I'm ha- always happy to share with others, you know, how this whole thing, weird world works. Yeah, that's amazing. And so a million dollars a year. I mean, most entrepreneurs exiting corporate life, they're looking for, now let me hit the six figure number. And you shot way past that in short order. And I, I first heard your story. I was reading a Forbes article about your success. I don't even remember where I found it at. And I said, like, I got to bring this guy on the show to tell our listeners, you know, how he pulled this off. And I'd love to hear you share with our listeners how you started, what brought you down this path, and how you managed to build such a profitable business without having any employees in the first place. Great questions. It's interesting because it started with reading a book when I was in college, and I've always loved traveling. And I read a book, and this man talked about how he traveled the world and learned skills and did extreme sports. And he had an internet business to just basically finance his lifestyle. And when I was in college, I said, that's what I want to do. I just want to travel the world and have fun. And you know what? If an internet business was the obvious way to finance things, you can't do this in real estate. You can't do this with stocks. You can't do this you know, working as a, you know, highly paid commission only salesperson for a company. So internet business, it was, and I focused on that to the point where, you know, many years later went by before I was at the point where all I could do, where I could sit back and relax and money poured in, you know, and I was making over a million dollars a year profit. and my business allowed me to travel in style and experience life, I believe, the way God meant for us to experience this wonderful creation that we are a part of. That's great. I want to put on a word you just said. You just said a million dollars a year profit. And that wasn't like, you know, some business, they have these like slim little margins. You might have a million dollars in revenue. You come home with $20,000 at the end of the year. You're actually you're putting this in your bank account. Uh, and left, leaving it there, a million bucks a year. But what was the, you know, obviously it was internet business. You know, what brought you down this path? You were originally a corporate guy, right? I worked for, so I graduated college in 2010. I worked in marketing. I worked managing companies' pay-per-click accounts. I was managing about 25 small businesses' pay-per-click accounts, spending between 10000 to 400000 a month. And at about 25 accounts, and I was managing their pay per click accounts for two years, and I was getting paid about 5000 a month doing that job. Oh, wow. So you weren't even close to six figures at that point, just you know, doing the grind. And that's very common for many people. So, where were you in a mindset to say, okay, enough of this garbage, I'm going to move on out of my own world? You said it, but you wanted to travel. 
Was that part of it or was it financial or what actually led you to say, I'm going to start my own business? Well, what led me to start my own business was, you know, during college, I had been trying to start my own, you know, and I had, I had fits and starts and I, you know, I could go into, you know, the various ups and downs, but really make things short in 2009, which is when I decided after, you know, I'd read the book in 2008 and I decided in 2009, I was going to work for myself. I was going to be an entrepreneur, this weird thing. And I'd start businesses during college. I started tutoring. You know, I found my hot market, the market with the strongest pain point who needed tutoring was Asian international students in at the college I went to. And I really focused on that market. And I really offered a lot of tutoring services to this market. And they had a lot of money. That was the funny thing. I went to a state school, but the Asian international students, there were a lot of them. They had a lot of money and I could make really good margins helping them with anything in school. So I catered to that audience and I speak Japanese. So that helped, but most of the Asian international students are Chinese. So I focused on that. I was making $10,000 a month for a little period during college. And then I expanded. I started expanding to other colleges in California. And the problem was without that face-to-face interaction and without that accountability, you know, I ended up having my PayPal account banned, long story short. (laughs) Wow. That kind of shuts you down short order. (laughs) Exactly. Because I would help tutor a student in, you know, Cal State, you know, San Diego, but they would get a B plus on their essay. And they said their parents were expecting an A. And then I'd get, you know, a refund for, you know, $2,000. So a couple of those and your PayPal account is gone. So I lost my ability to do commerce (laughs) <laughs> in short order. And by that time I dropped out of college. So I was, you know, I was dead in the water. I couldn't, you know, I, I don't know. It was, I couldn't market on campuses anymore. I lost that ability. And that's when I got a job. So I had been making some money and then I got a job, but I got a job in the internet industry because I knew what I wanted to do was internet marketing. So I I knew what I was going for. I didn't just take what was thrown at me. I knew what I wanted. I had a goal. And I'd say for those listening, the first thing to know in your life is know thyself. I think that's Confucius. Know thyself. And I had a goal and I knew where I wanted to be. And I wanted to travel and have fun. And I wanted to have an internet business that afforded me to do that. And I don't know. There's been so many fits and starts, but that was the impetus. And after that two-year job, I learned from hundreds of different small businesses, small and medium-sized businesses that I managed their advertising. And I got good at it. And I gave my all to my job. You know, I always worked hard. And I think one of the issues I see with a lot of people these days is, you know, they're dissatisfied with their job, but they don't work hard at it. They don't respect their boss. They don't try to learn from those older than themselves. They're mad at the world, but they don't pay homage to their roots and what they're beholden to. And I always worked hard. I was the first one in, last one out. I made my boss. I always held up my boss. I made him more money. I did whatever I could because at that time I was, you know, I was his servant basically. Mm -hmm. So I always worked hard. And, and for the clients too, I never, you know, I never said, oh, I have to deal with this guy again. I said, how do I deal with this angry client who always wants more results? And I would try to deliver them. And through that process, I learned a lot after two years and I became very good at online advertising to the point where I was able to start my own business. And since I quit my job in 2012, in September, 2012, I've, you know, I've done very well for myself. And, you know, I'm very thankful. That's great. It's funny because we were talking before the official interview started here and John and I have very libertarian viewpoints. And it's funny that you just kind of came, you said a riffing on that. I was like, you know, I'm on the same train with you, John. 
And that's funny. It, it brings a really good point down too, is if you're going to do something, the Bible says, whatever the hand find it to do, do it I might. In other words, if you're going to do something, if it's worth doing, work hard at it. If it's not worth doing, get out of it. Don't play halfway. If you're going to be the job, then do the job. If you're not going to do the job, you know, get out of the job and do something else that you can find a passion for and do it. If you're going to run a business, don't do it halfway. Do it with everything you have in it so you can make the most of it. And like John said, he took an opportunity with an employer to learn and to serve that employer. And if you are going to be an employee, you ought to serve your employer. And when you have your own business, you serve your clients. And that is part of being a good business person that really does fall in with the libertarian mindset, which is there's a reason we do what we do. They're paying us for results. They're paying us for a reason. Yes. And that's just part of life. And if you don't have that philosophy, I think you're going to fail at life. Honestly, that's just part of what makes things work. And I'm an unabashed capitalist too. It's just, it's, I'm just going to throw it out there. But anyways, you did get into the internet marketing type of business, mm-hmm. but in a couple short years, you were traveling and you were making a, a big money. Can you tell us like, what form did your business take at that point? So in 2012, when I left my job, I made a quarter of a million dollars. 2013, I made half a million dollars. 2014, I made a million dollars. This is revenues here. And in 2015, I made $3 million or like something like $2.8 or $2.9 million, but I made a million dollars profit. That was my first year doing a million dollars profit. And that was kind of my ascension. And what I did was I did performance marketing where I was marketing for clients based on results. So instead of the typical, you know, in my profession, and you could do this in any profession, honestly, you can be an accountant and you can say, if I say, you know, I'm only going to take, you know, I'm going to charge 25% of whatever I save you on taxes or something like that. You can do this in any profession, but in marketing, you know, you can charge people. The typical thing is you charge people maybe a thousand dollars a month to manage their ads. Now, what I did was, you know, I did a number of those deals in the beginning. It was a mixture in the beginning, but I also did performance deals where I said, if I get you a new customer, you pay me a hundred dollars and you don't pay. That's all. You don't have to pay for the ads. You All you know is that the customer is worth, maybe it's worth $300 to your business, but you're going to pay me $100. And people say, I'll pay you all day. They'll say, I'll pay you all day. So I did that model and people didn't necessarily know where I was putting up ads. People didn't know what the ad said. People didn't know what the image was or the video was or what website they were coming from. But what they knew was that they were getting new customers. And they said, okay, send us more customers. They didn't, <laughs> they, they didn't care. Oh, do they own the website? Do they not own the website? They said, just send me more. Hey, can you double that? That's what the business said. Because they don't want to mess around with like domain name, you know, all this other stuff. So they said, send me more customers. And I grew that very large. And that's how I grew it because they, you know, the business owner said, hey, we'll send me more, send me more. And it was great. Yeah, I'd give you $5 all day long for 15 bucks, right? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. But it makes a lot of sense. And, you know, for me, it was very easy. It's a very lean business because I had to just manage ads. You know, I'm at my computer managing Google ads and Facebook ads. Whereas, you know, the business owner, you know, I didn't have to manage employees though. Whereas the business owner, they had to manage product fulfillment. They had to manage customer support. They had to manage salespeople. They had to manage vendor and service provider relationships. I don't have to manage any of that. So that was a very easy way for me to grow a solo business. I did one part, but it was important enough to the other company that they would pay me good money. But it was fair on both sides. It's a win, win, win. Exactly. It's all about the value proposition and you provided far more value than what they're paying you. And therefore it's a no brainer for them to hire you. And that's always going to be the case in business. And I do want to ask you about the book you mentioned earlier. You didn't really share the title. I think I know what it is, but I'd love for you to share what that book was. Yeah. So I'm actually in the process of writing a book called Option B, drop out of school, 
quit your job and live free. And the goal is to help people understand. There's two goals, and I'll mention both of them. But the first goal is to help people understand that there is an alternative to college. College mandatory or compulsory education. I've done a lot of studies on this. Compulsory education has only really been a major part of American society since early 1900s. In the world, frankly, it, going to college, people survived and got rich and thrived and started businesses for thousands of years before universities. So going to college is not a necessity. Yet in today's mindset, it is a, that is the only path you can go in life. People don't even consider apprenticeships or mentorships or self-education or experience as alternatives to college. The majority of, you know, really it's boomers, you know, and like the past generations believe that college is the path. You know, if you have the money, it's the path. But historically, we are a blip in time, and there have been many alternatives beforehand. And really, you know, if you really want to go back, I won't expand on this, but compulsory education, it only came about in the 1800s in the world, and it first came about in Germany, or what was at the time Prussia. And the reason it came about was because the Austria-Hungary Empire lost to this guy named Napoleon in wars and Austria-Hungary people said, hey, like all of our different German tribes are not working well together. We all speak different dialects and we all have different cultural backgrounds and we don't fight together, you know, as a single power. How do we get everybody to work together and to have the same tribal affiliation to a singular government. And the solution they came up with was education. And they said, the next generation, we won't have that problem and we're going to defeat France. And guess what? They did. And it's called the freaking Nazis. And some people would say it borders on brainwashing. Some people would also say that German society was the most technologically advanced society. And it was in the world. So there's pluses and minuses to education, but at the same time, the problem with education is that you've got to recognize that we are in a post-industrial society. And, you know, just America, you know, as an American to move forward, we need to be innovators. We need to be entrepreneurs. We need to be creative thinkers. We need to be self-aware. And I don't believe the education system creates that in individuals. And I want people to understand there is an option B and for not just us as an individual to move forward in life and to create that financial freedom, but for us as a country to move forward in the world, we need to be, go back to our roots and be individualistic thinkers and be self-aware of everything. And I believe we need to think for ourselves and self-educate more than we have been. Yeah, that's quite well taken, too, because education is important, but it doesn't mean education is strictly in a university or in, in the four walls of some school building. I'm a strong believer in education. I believe that if you do not learn, you stop growing. And anytime you want to grow, you must continue learning. That's just the way things work. But you also said that, you know, the university isn't necessarily the right place. And I would say universities these days have largely become an atmosphere of groupthink, and they don't really provide innovation anymore. Maybe there's some small faceted areas. And, and some people say, well, it's the information age. You have to go to school and you have to get this big degree and move forward. And I'm, I'm right with you, John. I say absolutely not. You don't have to do anything. I went to college. I have a computer science degree. I was a computer programmer for a while before I became a writer and other things. But I tell you what, most of what I learned, I did not learn in college. The vast majority of what I learned was self-learning and on a job. It was about me applying myself to learning. And anybody that wants to do something, you don't have to say, oh, I have to have this degree. I have to have these letters after my name in order to be successful. And maybe if you want to be a doctor, then maybe you need the MD. I don't know. But honestly, even in healthcare, there are people who every day are making tremendous advances and differences in people's lives 
by moving outside the norm and finding alternatives to conventional care. I'm going off on a tangent here, but you know, that's the way it is. You have to look outside of this group think box and find a new way. And then John's write this book about you know, option B, and I think that's great. I'm looking forward to reading it. I've also heard another book, uh, read another book, I mean, called uh, None Dare Call It Education. And it just talks about some of that background like John covered. It's not that compulsory education is necessarily the right path for everybody. Now, we, our family, we homeschool. And really? really loves us. Yeah, we sure do. We got a big family, got seven kids, and we homeschooled since 2000. And my youngest is nine, and we're still homeschooling. And I tell you, the thing about homeschooling is it gives you the opportunity to focus on their strengths. You know, yes, we teach them English, we teach them math, we teach them history and all these other things, but we teach them in a way that they can really think through things in life and, you know, be different, be innovator. My 17 year old, he's an entrepreneur himself. And he wants to build a business. I don't know what he's going to do in life, but I mean, they each have their own personalities. You go sit in a schoolroom, you're going to be homogenized to whatever that classroom is. But if you want to be an individual, self-educate. So I'm looking, we're going off on a tangent here, but hey, this is fun. I love this stuff. I, oh my God. No, no, no. You're speaking my language and I want to self-educate. My wife grows up in a culture which doesn't believe in that, but Dude, I am so on board with you. And I think, you know, just to go back a second, I believe college is like legal profession, medical profession, engineering, you know, where you're constructing bridges, you know, where people's life depends on, you know, things. Those are the professions, which is less than 5% of the population. I think it's something like 3% are lawyers, doctors, or engineers. But that's university even like our country was brought up in homeschool everybody's country was homeschooling. And I think there needs, I love that, man. I wish we were homeschooling our kids. I think it is such a, I think that's amazing. So really, I, I'm, I'm very envious. <laughs> that's amazing. I think that's really cool. And not a lot of people talk about it, but it's, it's a conversation. It should be a conversation, but it's not a talking point in society. And I, I don't understand why it's such a, fundamental element of everybody's life yet it's just taken and face out yeah that's awesome man yeah and of course we're talking about you know talking about kids but the bottom line is that's the next generation of, yes. of the business owners that's the next generation of the entrepreneurs and there's probably parents listening to the show and say well i'm just kind of stuck in this rut but you know you need to look at options option b and uh, besides that don't forget this is a show about the listener you listening to this what are you doing as listening to the show, what are you doing to self-educate? What are you doing to say, okay, I'm not just going to follow the, the standard of what's expected of me in this career path, climbing the corporate ladder. I mean, you're listening to the show for a reason. You don't want to sit here and listen to this and just continue on in the job, make a change. What's the change going to be? This is why this show is here. It's to help you make a change. So John, you know, you've been telling us kind of like what you're doing and I, I believe, you know, to, to put a, a label on it, I think, you know, you're not selling products of your own. You're selling or bringing customers for other companies, their products. They're having the headaches of the fulfillment and the orders and all that stuff. And you just bring them customers and get paid. And generally in internet marketing, we call that affiliate marketing. And I believe that's where you're going with that, right? That, that's what I am, an affiliate marketer. Exactly. And so tell our audience, because not everybody is familiar with what that actually is. How does that work in kind of like a practical high level overview? What does that mean? Sure. So, I mean, the term to Google is affiliate networks, and there are a lot of companies out there, you know, Amazon, Walmart, eBay, Uber, almost every company on the planet now offers what's called an affiliate program where they're willing to pay you money to send them customers. So if you send Uber a new customer, they will pay you something like, you know, $50. So if you get somebody to download the Uber app and take, you know, three rides, Uber will give you $50. Amazon, if you get somebody to buy a product from Amazon, they will give you a percentage of what they make, anywhere from 3 to 10% of whatever that customer buys from Amazon for helping create a customer. Now, the way it works in practicality is, I mean, on Amazon, you would scroll down to the bottom of the page and you would click on the link in the footer that says affiliate partners or affiliate program. 
And they, you know, you'd see a page and it would say, hey, we pay anywhere from three to 10%. You know, if you send us customers, you click join program and they'll give you a little toolbar that will allow you to create links for whatever product it is you want to promote. You know, for instance, I use Amazon's program because I'm a big book reader. So whenever I read a book and I talk to my audience about a book I read, I will say, hey, I just read this really cool sci-fi, you know, novel by, you know, Daniel Suarez. And here's the link if you want to purchase this book. And I'll tell them a little bit about the book and I'll say why it's amazing and exciting and cool. And Daniel Suarez is one of my favorite authors in sci-fi niche, by the way. And, you know, I'll put the link there. If people say, ooh, this sounds interesting, I'll buy the book. I created a customer for Amazon. So I added value. I got somebody to buy a book and Amazon will give me, you know, 5% of whatever they bought. So I get a buck, you know, if it's a $20 book. Now moving beyond Amazon, if you can get a big audience of people, if I get a thousand people, if I have a big audience and I get a thousand people to buy a book, I just made a thousand dollars in a day. And there are affiliate programs that'll pay you more than 5%. There are affiliate programs that'll pay you up to 90% because generating a new customer for some companies who have big stock valuations, they just want new customers and they're upselling them to other products and other services. So they just say, hey, you know, give us a new customer and we'll, you know, they'll buy more than one product, but we'll give you 90%. So you can find affiliate programs that'll pay you a lot of money. That's the game. You reach people, either you grow a bigger audience organically, you know, you have a lot of followers on, you know, a social media platform, or you can place ads if you're good at, you know, if you're good at placing ads. So if you're very extroverted and you're good at talking to people and you want to, you know, be a influencer, you can make a lot of money, you know, having a big audience. Or if you're more introverted and you like doing more data analysis and research, you can place ads and target people. So it, it works on both sides of the equation. Yeah, sure does. As a matter of fact, you're just talking about Amazon and something else I was thinking about also is Audible. So I love listening to all your books. I'm going to like cross-country drives with the family or whatever. And I will listen to these books. But you know what? If, if you refer a new customer to Audible, they give you a $50 bounty if you do it the right way. And they get the book for free. So authors definitely, you know, I mean, John, when you put your book out there, you know, get an audio book of it and then say, hey, you want to get the free, book free, you get a $50 bounty for you. And that's a whole lot more than a commission for, you know, for a single book, a couple of dollars for a book on your own, but 50 bucks is not a bad deal. Two customers a day, you know, for an audio book and, you know, you're making $3,000 a month. And for most people that would replace their monthly salary. And, and it's good. You know, that's something I believe in. So you can, you can join affiliate programs for whatever you believe in. It's really exciting. Yeah, speaking of books, as a matter of fact, that's actually what I was getting to earlier. It was just to lead you down this path to say, I want to do internet marketing. And I think you mentioned in the Forbes article, or the, the writer of the Forbes article actually mentioned it anyways. And uh, that was, you know, it was Ferris's book, wasn't it? They kind of gushed on that path. Tim Ferriss's book was the book I read that influenced me to go down this path. Yeah, it was a great book. I've actually listened to it twice. I have the book on my shelf, had it for years, never got to reading it. And uh, there's a lot of great uh, suggestions there. Got, you know, just like you, I'm also very much a, a sci-fi reader for fun. And uh, really? like, like Who are your favorite authors? It's actually a, an author that's kind of less known that I've really enjoyed her books named Tabitha Lord. Uh, at least it's her pen name. I'm not sure if that's her actual name, but uh, look into that. She's uh, you might like enjoy her books, kind of like an off world stuff. Kind of enjoy that. And uh, I did have to find some others for you. <laughs> to, yeah, sorry, like, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, mine are like William, William Gibson, Daniel Suarez, Neil Stevenson. You know, I'm into the cyberpunk stuff and all that jazz. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of bummed now because I know there's some, some authors that I'd love to shout out, and I'm like, I'm like pulling a blank in my brain here at the very moment. And I'll throw it in the show notes. I'll put some of my favorite authors in there for you guys. <laughs> so sorry, I can't think of it off the top of my head. Uh, What's funny is just on a side note, I listened to a, a lot of billionaire interviews as well. And Elon Musk said, he said, I'm actually not creative at all. He said, I don't come up with any ideas. He says, I just read a lot of sci-fi books. And, you know, I look at some of the concepts from these sci-fi books I read and I I figure out if they are financially feasible, you know, at, at what point they are financially feasible to build a company doing that. 
and I, um, you know, I figure out if I can raise the money to uh, make that happen, and then I go ahead and do it. <laughs> he said he just copies concepts that he's seen in books, and he just figures out if he can raise enough money to uh, create the company. I mean, he's not creating concepts; he's just looking at sci-fi authors who are, I believe, the most creative people in the world. And figures out if he can do them. That he's just a business person, like anybody else. So he's but very, very smart, obviously. <laughs> yeah, he, he's tremendous. I mean, just, I mean, I love the name of his company, the Boring Company. I mean, <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> boring, you know, tunnels. But you know, I was like, oh, I, I want to invest in the Boring Company. <laughs> oh, I got, that guy is a hoot. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was, I was reading his, his biography, his fascinating background he has, too, you know, coming out of like, South Africa and just kind of his, his history coming up to Canada and then on to the U.S. And it's how he pursued his dream. And sometimes, you know, you don't always know how things are going to work out. But the point is, is you, you keep driving forward and there's no such thing really as failure unless you quit. So you take the things that don't work the way you think and you learn from it. You keep on moving forward. And that's what he kind of did. You know, like feather in his cap that he can make things happen because he's just, I'm just going to do it. And you know, don't tell me I can't do it. I'm just going to do it. And that's kind of like what with me. I know somebody tells me I can't do something. That just fires me up. So I'm going to show you. <laughs> so. yeah. And what's kind of interesting is that like to go more into this, like you can't do it thing is something many people don't know about Elon Musk is he actually grew up in one of the richest families in South Africa. His father was a uh, major developer. And I think his father alone had either tens of millions or hundreds of millions of dollars, but he was always the black sheep of the family because he never wanted to get into the family business. He wanted to go into technology. And his father said, you should, you know, become, you go into engineering or something. And he said, I like the internet. I like video games. And when he moved, you know, and he always identified with his mother or something, I believe they got divorced. And he didn't have any money to, you know, so even though his father was very rich, his parents would never give him any money to do anything. And so he was, you know, living, he didn't even have an apartment. He was living in his office in Silicon Valley. He bought a little office and he would, he, a gym membership so he could shower. And <laughs> that was his thing. He had a gym membership and an office. He didn't even have a place to live. And he would sleep on, you know, like basically the floor of his office to get by and shower at the gym. And that was his life. So he didn't even have a life. He was just working and, and he had no money to start, even though he came from these very high standards. So he was the black sheep of the family for many years. And if you've ever, I, I've seen family interviews where it's been him and his dad and his brother. And it's the most awkward, awkward situation I've ever seen. For years, he was the black sheep. He was disrespected by his family. He was ostracized. He was not. And, you know, he forged his own path because of something he believed in. And, you know, he was an odd duck, but he followed it and he was never scared. And I think, you know, and I felt the same way growing up. And I'm sure there are many others out there who feel the same way. But you go for it and, you know, time will tell. History will tell your story if you follow your path. Yeah, I think, I think we've been given a path to follow and sometimes we do and sometimes we don't. Yeah. And if, if you're not, you just don't find the, you know, what you're looking for. So let me ask you this because uh, I want to kind of bring it home to our audience as far as you know, what can they do to achieve some of the kind of success like you do. Now, you have a, a YouTube channel, I know. And I'm going to put that, that link in the show notes. But if you could just search, you know, John Cristani, C-R-E-S-T-A-N-I on YouTube, you'll find him. But how do you direct people today? I mean, you, you help a lot of people get to where they want to go. And, and a lot of these resources are free. So, you know, where do you suggest people start at? Let's say somebody is, you know, they're sitting in a corporate job or maybe they're, maybe they're like my son. They're a teenager. So, they, you know, I like to get, you know, growing something in internet marketing or, or something of that nature. How do they get started? Where do you direct them to to start with? Great question. Well, the first thing is not about what to do, I would say, as much as what not to do. And what not to do, turn off your TV. Stop paying for cable. Unsubscribe from whatever magazines or newspapers you are in. Average person is on, I think, like 150 email lists that are giving them 
coupons or discounts or pitching them products or services every single day. Unsubscribe from all of those. Unfriend every negative person in your life. I'm, all, I'm with that. That's, that's funny. And it, what you're talking about here, and I, I'm hearing this echo of Tim Ferriss's book because I mean, he influenced me with that book because I, I got rid of news. I was a news junkie yeah. until after I got in that book. I was like, you know, that's going to be tough because I would spend hours a day on news. But I literally, I, I've probably spent this year since, you know, the January at this point, you know, maybe a half hour on news total. And I'm a guy who used to spend hours a day. I just don't care. And I don't miss it a bit. Get that junk out of your life. It's negativity. It, don't, it doesn't serve you. In most cases, it doesn't give you anything you can change anyways. Honestly, a perverted opinion based on whatever slant the news media is that you're watching, whether it's, you know, it doesn't matter which side of the aisle you're on, it's going to have their slant on it anyways. In a sense, you're actually building up group think. How about you just find out what's going on in the world for the people who, who are wasting their time watching the news? You don't have to worry about, you know, if something big happens, you'll find out about it. And uh, you don't have to spend all your day on that. Like you spoke, you know, negativity. Yeah, my goodness. I don't have time for that. Who needs to sit there and look at all the garbage? Really, just, I don't, I don't have time for that. And if, if you have time for that, then you're wasting your time. Exactly. So you have to free up because all of us, we all have our days, you know, we're awake for, you know, let's figure you sleep eight hours a day. We have 16 hours every day to live. And every one of us has our time already allocated. You need to get rid of time. Stop. I'm, I'm not going to say hustle hard or sleep less, you know, because we need our sleep. That's how our brain is powered. That's how we process information. You know, don't give up sleep. I take sleep very importantly. But, you know, there's a lot of time in our day where we're checking notifications on our phone. I've turned off every single notification on my phone. My phone never rings anymore. It's like a pager. You know, if somebody calls me, I see a missed call. When I decide to check, my texts don't buzz or beep or on the phone, they even blink now because the tech companies, they are trying to get your attention. They are in a battle to get you to go back. They say, come back to me, come back to me, come back to me. That's all they're trying to do. They're saying, give me your attention. And you can decide to give it to them or you can opt out and say, no, I am in control of my life. You will not control me. I can give you the steps, but if you are not in control of your life, if you are being hounded by 300 other people saying, don't do this, do this, do this, you're not going to go anywhere. You can't pack, you can't create more time. So you need to get rid of stuff first. That is the very first step. Take back control of your life. Don't let the tech companies, don't let the, you know, whatever it is, the tech companies and the media are the biggest culprits and they are fighting for your attention. You decide whether you give it to them or not. And once you decide to take back control of your life, that's when you can move forward and start learning and start creating your business and start influencing others. That makes total sense. And I do the same thing. I mean, my phone ringer is like never on unless I'm expecting a call. Yeah. I'm not expecting a call. It's off. And, and sorry, guys, you try to reach me, email me because you're better off reaching me by email. It's just the way it is. My phone, the same way. It's, it's like, it's just an electronic tether. And I'm not interested in being bothered by it. And I go out for runs. I go for walks, get in the woods, you know, get away so you can think yeah. and have, you know, have your brain, you know, refreshed with sleep. Like you said earlier, you know, you need to have that time. And, it's, and somebody coined the phrase, the attention economy. I can't remember who said that, but that's what it is. It's all about everybody's trying to grab your attention and you have a choice, give it to them or say, no, I control my time. I agree with John on this. You got to control your time and, and control what is grabbing your time left and right. You know, like you said, sit there and, and unsubscribe. You know, there's probably a very precious few email list that you really need to have. I mean, I'm a, I'm a writer. I teach copywriting. And we talk to people about maybe making swipe files. You can make a swipe file. You can have it go to a folder. You don't have to sit there and read it until you're ready to actually write some copy. You're going to go look at it then. Read it read it then. But make it part of your project day that you set time aside for. It doesn't mean it has to interrupt your day. You know, don't make it part of your life where your all your time is spent doing interruption work for other people. That's great. So let's say they cut that stuff out of your life, John. Then what? You know, now that you have that freed up time, what's the next step? Sure. So the next step is, I would say, follow a number of teachers, right? You know, start experimenting, start learning. You know, we have to be lifelong learners. So 
it depends on how much you know yourself at this point. But, you know, if you're really into sales and that's that's what you enjoy doing, you enjoy talking to people, follow a couple of sales trainers. You know, there's, you know, people such as Grant Cardone and Dan Locke. And, you know, there's different teachers out there on the Internet who are successful doing this. Or if you're really interested in marketing, you don't want to talk to people, but you want to, you know, you want to do that. Follow me, follow Alex Becker, follow Kevin David, you know, a couple other people. You know, if you're interested in real estate or stock trading, you know, there are people for that. Or pick and choose, you know, a couple from one area and, you know, one one or two from another. Whatever it is, start following some teachers and start understanding what you resonate with the most and start taking action based on what they're recommending in their education and take a course here or there. You know, it's not you don't have to take just one course. You can take a course here or there from a few teachers. Everything is cheaper. The thing about independent teachers such as myself is it's much cheaper than going to community college. So you can take a couple courses, you can follow people's free content and start figuring out what you resonate with the most. And once you figure that out, go all in on a different, you know, on a particular industry. Now for affiliate marketing, now the way I teach people to do affiliate marketing is once again, once people decide to have me as a teacher, I show them how to do email marketing, you know, solo ads, you know, is what I show. I show people how to create their own funnels, you know, using click funnels or not click funnels. I show people how to create their own websites because creating your own website is an essential part of being a marketer. You need your own website and you need your own website to advertise on things other, you know, on Google, Facebook, or YouTube. So after people create their own website, and this is my six week program, I'm just kind of actually knocking it down. After people create their funnels in week two, I show them how to do YouTube advertising. I show them how in week four, I show Google advertising, you know, on Google and Bing. Then week five, I'm showing people social advertising on Facebook. And you start advertising products using proven methods with proven swipes, you know, ad swipes, as you said, Mm -hmm. and proven landing pages, which I give all my students proven landing pages so they don't have to create their own to actually go out and start marketing with what's already proven in the industry. And I lay the path out for them as they go through things. And, you know, in the beginning of the course, you know, I'm showing examples from my own product. And then you decide, you know, in week six, I say, hey, you can advertise any niche, any program you want. You know, you can advertise health, you know, health products to help people, you know, have increased brain power or have help people have, you know, muscle supplements is a huge industry. You know, there's GNC, vitamin shop, et cetera. You know, there's weight loss supplements. There's, you know, home survival kits. You know, there's lead generation, you know, helping people install solar energy or get mortgages or life. And there's so many different, you know, people buy anything. You can sell any, you can market anything online. So, you know, at the end of my six week course, the goal is for people to have, to understand how to advertise, that's specifically what I teach, and to have their niche figured out so that they know what they want to move forward in. But there's many ways to do affiliate marketing. You can be an influencer, create your own traffic if you're comfortable being in front of the camera and building an audience. But that's what I teach. I teach paid advertising and I teach affiliate marketing. And that's what I believe is the best way for most people. Now, let's say somebody wants to find that course. Where do they find it at? Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And in the description of every video, there's links to get more information about it. And there's also links just if people already know this is for them to just move forward and sign up. Sweet. Thank you, John. I appreciate that. So let's wrap up here because I know we're going along, but I'm just having a blast in this conversation. No worries. I love it. Uh, this is awesome. So one last question is, you know, you're working on plan B, the book, and then uh, you've got this business growing and, and going gangbusters and for yourself and helping students. What's next on the horizon for you? Is that is that all that's going on right now? Is that keep you fully occupied or anything else on the horizon for you? Yeah. So, I mean, 
you know, I have big goals. I, I, I want to help create a paradigm shift in the world. I want to help what I believe expand human consciousness or self-awareness, but nailing it back down a couple steps. The first goal is to, you know, it's to reach, you know, I'm, I'm trying to reach more people right now. And I believe, I believe I can reach about, you know, comfortably four to five times as many people as I'm reaching in my business. I'm also working on software because 80% of my training program is teaching people how to place ads because it's very technical right now. It's very not technical in terms of coding, but to advertise on Google AdWords or Facebook or YouTube, you have to know a lot of specific things to do. And 80% of my training course is teaching people these very specific things. What I'm working on is I'm working on software to automate 80% of my course so that all people have to do is click a button. Let's say they want to advertise auto insurance. They click a button and they input their website and the ad is posted to Google, Facebook, and, and or YouTube all at once. Now, instead of having to show people exactly what selection and what checkbox is and how to do the targeting. Because what's really interesting about affiliate marketing is the skills. And affiliate marketing is a skill-based industry, meaning copywriting, I believe, is really important on one end, you know, kind of like the empathy, the right brain end. And on the other side is data analysis or what's called optimization. And that's more the left brain end And in the middle, you have research. How do I identify what is a good ad? What is a bad ad? What is a good ad for landing page to copy? And how to draw patterns from those. So those three skills, I want to teach those more because I believe those are the paths to becoming a highly successful marketer. So if I can automate 80% of my training through software, I can focus on, I believe, what's the most important. So I'm working on software right now. And that's the first step to growing a big company. I'm also, I'm also advising a number of startups, you know, just in the industry. I'm, I'm an active angel investor in, uh, you know, funded companies, you know, companies who have already gone through their seed round. I'm trying to move into, uh, you know, the big goal is to move from a cash business into a capitalism based business because I am a capitalist, but I'm not in my business is not in a capitalism space. It is in a cash space. So that's the big goal is to kind of move up there. And I believe that'll help me affect more people and affect more change. So a couple things there, it's kind of muddled, but I hope that makes sense. Sure. And I'm, I'm sure you talk about this on your YouTube channel too. So people can absolutely <laughs> get to know you a little bit better. I, don't. I, actually, I actually don't. People don't no. understand the distinction. I don't think people are interested in the distinction between a cash business and a capitalism business. Most, most people are looking out to make their first dollars online. Whereas many people don't understand the distinction between a cash business and a capitalism business. Capitalism is the Holy grail. Being the capitalism system is very hard. It's a very closed club of connections, but that's how all the big things and the big changes are made in our society. So I know I need to move into that space if I want to truly have the effect on the world that I need to have. Yeah, which is part of that process of growing past the startup phase. You got to move into the next level. That's great. John, thank you so much for your time today. I'd love to to ask you to come back again another time and we'll talk some more because it's been an awesome conversation, man. Thank you for joining us. And I will put all the show notes in here as always. John, have a terrific day, bud. Thank you so much. And thanks for having me on. Thank you for listening to the Solopreneur Success Podcast. We hope you discovered valuable advice on how to start and grow your own successful solopreneur business. If you liked the podcast, you'll love the all-new Solopreneur Success Connections community at solopreneurcoach.com. Here you'll get exclusive access to our private, members-only community of business builders, free business building resources, and live online monthly training designed to accelerate your business success. Join us now at solopreneurcoach.com. Hey, Solopreneurs, it's Steve Combs again. You can find the show notes for this episode at solopreneurcoach.com forward slash 
018. In the show notes, you'll find all the many links we talked about in this episode, including the many entrepreneurs, authors, and books mentioned. And yep, that includes both of our sci-fi shortlists. You'll want to check that out if you're a sci-fi fan. But the huge announcement I wanted to tell you about is John Cristani will be a guest trainer for one of our upcoming Solopreneur Success Connections live monthly trainings. If you like the ideas John mentioned in this interview, you need to get into our community so you can participate in that upcoming direct training on affiliate marketing for free. And as a listener to the Solopreneur Success podcast, you can start free for 30 days as either a monthly member or an annual patron just by entering discount code SS30 free during checkout from our community page at solopreneurcoach.com. Again, that code is SS30 FREE, SS30 free. And finally, thank you for listening. If you found this episode helpful, the best way to show your thanks is to share it with someone you know. And if you loved it, five star ratings on your favorite podcast player make a great tip. Thanks.